Construction workers sometimes perform work in confined space, work areas that are enclosed and have a restricted means of entry or exit that may present dangerous and hazardous conditions not found in other normal work areas. A confined space is any space that is, one, large enough for a worker to enter, two, is difficult to exit in the event of an emergency, and three, not designed to be continuously occupied by workers. Some examples of confined spaces found in residential construction may include manholes, sewer systems, storm drains, precast concrete manhole units, transformer vaults, tanks, pits, crawl spaces, and attics. A space may also be a permit-required confined space, or permit space, if it has one or more of the following hazardous conditions. Contains a hazardous atmosphere, contains material that has potential to engulf or suffocate a worker, has a layout that might trap a worker through converging walls or a sloped floor, or has any other serious safety or health hazard. Workers operating in confined spaces can face life-threatening hazards, including atmospheres where there is insufficient oxygen caused by displacement of air by another gas, hazardous levels of toxic gases and vapors, such as carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, or smoke, flammable and explosive atmospheres, which can arise from the presence of flammable liquids or gases in a confined space, mechanical, electrical, or physical hazards, such as moving mechanical parts, electrical shock, or excessive heat, flowing liquid that can flow into the confined space, causing drowning, suffocation, or other injury, extreme heat that may impede a worker from exiting the space without assistance due to heat stress. Because confined spaces can present very hazardous conditions, steps must be taken to protect workers if they work in permit-required confined spaces. Before any worker can enter a confined space, pre-entry planning must be conducted, including having a competent person identify any confined space on the job site, and determine whether these spaces are permit-required confined spaces. If the job site contains a permit-required space, any worker that must enter that space must be protected from potential hazards in the permit space. Keep in mind that construction work can create confined spaces, even if there are none at the start of a project. To effectively control hazards associated with confined spaces, a confined space program must be developed and followed. The program should identify precautions to be taken to protect the workers in the permit space, how workers will be trained to perform their duties safely, and the methods used to isolate and control hazards and how injured workers will be promptly and safely rescued from the confined space. The Permit Space Program also establishes the system for preparing, using, and canceling entry permits, which are written documents that allow and control entry into permit spaces and are issued by employers who have workers entering these confined spaces. After confined spaces on the job site have been identified, Workers must understand their existence, location, and the dangers posed by permit-required spaces, and that they cannot enter these spaces without authorization. Workers involved in entering permit-required confined space must also understand the potential hazards in these spaces and the methods used to isolate and control hazards so they can perform their duties safely. There are three categories of workers that have specific duties whenever work is performed in a permit-required confined space authorized entrants who are workers allowed to enter a permit space, attendants who are workers stationed outside the permit space charged with monitoring conditions within the space and preventing unauthorized entry, and entry supervisors who are responsible for overseeing entry operations. Before workers can enter a confined space, employers must provide pre-entry planning. This includes identifying the means of entry and exit and proper ventilation methods in the space ensuring that the air in a confined space is tested before workers enter for oxygen levels, flammable and toxic substances, and stratified atmospheres. Effective communication is important because there can be multiple contractors operating on a site, each with its own workers needing to enter the confined space. An attendant should be stationed outside the confined space to monitor personnel entering. Unauthorized workers cannot enter a confined space. 
Rescue attempts by untrained personnel can lead to multiple deaths. Employers should assess the worksite to determine what personal protective equipment, or PPE, is needed to protect workers. Employers should provide workers with the required PPE and proper training on its use, and inform them about any related hazards before the work starts. It's also important to have a pre-planned rescue strategy in case of a confined space emergency. The confined space program must include procedures for entrants to be rescued in a timely manner by qualified personnel. An estimated 60% of fatal accidents are untrained workers attempting the rescue of another worker. If calling 911 is your rescue plan, be aware that not all rescue services or emergency responders are trained and equipped to conduct confined space rescues. Emergency responders should have adequate equipment for rescues, such as atmospheric monitors, fall protection, extraction equipment, and self-contained breathing apparatus for the particular permit-required confined space. The rescue plan should include access strategies for ingress and egress, a project site plan, and GPS coordinates if in a remote location. Failure to understand the hazards of confined spaces can lead to death or serious injury. Unless you are trained in confined space hazards, and the precautions to eliminate them, you should never enter a confined space.